my son was very intelligent. I said, I want you to give me a degree. I don't care what field. And sure enough, a few years later, he graduated from the university. And uh, I was very proud of him. Jaime Jorge Zapata. Well, it was a very happy day. He was very happy, very, very happy. Yeah. My son always called. If it wasn't daily, it was every other day. He would always call. The first thing he would ask about his brothers, where were they, what were they doing, if they were going to school, if they were working, and just keeping in touch, making sure that they were doing okay. Where his father was, what I was doing. I had to make sure that when I talked to him, I was in good spirits because he felt if I was sad, he knew I was sad. And he says, Mom, what's wrong? Always kept in touch, no matter what. My son was very social. He liked going out and he enjoyed having a lot of friends. And if he met a person, he really met him for life. He kept in touch with them. When he was coming down to visit us from Laredo, he was calling all his friends, I'm gonna be down, we're gonna barbecue, we're gonna go fishing. And sure enough, by the time he got here, he, everybody was coming in. I started seeing cars come in. We knew. And Jaime is coming. And he enjoyed having a lot of friends. I met Jaime when we were in third grade. Supposedly I fought for a chair or whatever. He got to school, he sat down, and I told him, hey, that's my chair, you know, <laughs> you know, get out of my chair. But it's pretty funny, but after that, it was just history because we just became friends. And he was there from the very beginning of everything. Every, every turn of event that I actually went through, he was there, you know, from, from the day that I got married, he was there to my father passed away. He actually helped me bury my dad. You know, even when my, my daughter was born, you know, she, he, was, he was there for everything. It hurts me especially because I just graduated from here from the university and all this happened in February. I was gonna graduate in May and I had told him, you know what, you know, I, I really want you to be there for my graduation. And he would have been there. I have a feeling he was there. We had so many things. We went hunting, we went fishing. And you know, the, the, the way Jaime was, he, everything wasn't his. He always thought of it for everybody else. When I took over the Laredo office, there's a group that's called the, the, the Laredo Best, Border Enforcement Security Task Force. and. Jaime was assigned to that task force. He worked on the same floor I worked on. He worked with my wife, who was across the cubicle from him. So we got to talk a little bit, and I got to know him. We had a connection because we were both Brownsville boys. He thought more about others around him than he did about himself. He talked about his dreams. He talked about uh, getting married. He talked about you know, his future in law enforcement. He had things in mind that he wanted family. We would always tell him, oh man, be careful, be careful, you know, and, and the whole thing is that he, he was doing something that was bigger than him, and he knew that. He didn't realize what, a, what kind of an impact he made. He enjoyed what he was doing. He was very committed to his job and focused, very focused on, on what his duties were. He enjoyed his he work. He enjoyed his work, yes. yes. He wouldn't actually tell us what he was doing. Maybe that was the best for But us. he said he loved his job. Yes. He loved what he was doing. It seemed like he thought about the job all the time. And when he was working, he, he had an attitude about him that lightened the air, you know. It was a little uh, fun, but at the same time serious and uh, dedicated. He had the, a great work ethic. Um, he was all about the job, and it was all about people. When he was given this assignment to go to Mexico, he called me and he asked me, Mom, what do you think? And we discussed it. We discussed what he was going to do. He said he was going to work in the embassy. He was going to travel in an armored vehicle. When I talked to him, because uh, he asked me too, they said, well, it's up to you, they said, but uh, you have to be very, very careful. He said, don't worry, Dad. They said, my, uh, what I'm going to go do, they said, I'm going to work out of the embassy, and I'm just going to go and gather intelligence. We thought, well, he's going to be safe. I never thought he was going to be sent out on an assignment that took him many miles away and uh, that something well, like this would ever happen. When we heard about the event, we didn't know who was involved. So automatically we were, we were, we were worried because we had several agents in Mexico. And when we heard it was Jaime, the entire office rippled with, with shock and grief and anger takes a certain kind of man to go into that environment and, and be brave enough to, to try to do something about it. And that's what they're going to remember about Jaime Zapata. It only takes a little while to get to know Jaime. Once you meet him for, for a couple of minutes, it's just, you know that you, you know, he's a really good guy and you know, you're going to make a friend for life. 
it was a godsend, you know, that he was in my life and stuff for that long. I thank God because of the fact is that, you know what, I had the opportunity to, to have that closure with us. And, you know, I had an opportunity to tell him that I love him. And so, you know, as a brother, the void is there. It's always going to be there. But I, I, I know he's always going to be in my heart. It's a healing process. It hasn't been a year yet. We're still feeling it. I guess, like you said, it affected us all deeply. I mean, it was never forgotten. He'll never be forgotten. And his death seemed to bring people into a, a passionate mode about their work because, because he was so passionate about what he did. What we're thinking is to um, give scholarships, for, especially for kids that are going to law enforcement. And we want to give back to the community. Yeah. Jaime was a very giving person. It's very difficult. Every day we're reminded and we don't want Jaime to be forgotten. To me that's like he was so young and he had so much to offer. I don't want him to be forgotten. And, and I, I want kids to look up to him and say, you know, that's who I want to be. I hope they remember him as a very bright, intelligent, energetic person very kind with a person. big heart. Yes, a very kind person. Very giving, wonderful son and a wonderful human being. Thank you.